Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance for you on this little guy right here. This is the A.G. Russell um, Ranch something, something. I, I really should know the name of this knife. I'll put it in the description, but um, it kind of eludes me at the moment. And uh, so I figured I would go ahead and uh, not say it. It's a lockback. Um, this is a, um, it's by A.G. Russell. This is a company I haven't actually featured on the channel before. Um, and that's in some ways maybe not ideal, but okay, I'm going to go ahead and treat this. Um, I always lay out my parts using these little things at the top here so I know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and treat this counterclockwise. So that way this one goes up top here, then this, then this, then this, etc. Come on, pop loose. Come on. I know you want to come out. Okay, bro, don't fight me. I'm the human, I'll win this. All right, whatever. This one is free spinning, T6. All right, I'll grab my second driver. A.G. Russell is a company that I have not featured on the channel um, simply because I hadn't really thought about them that much. Um, the one thing I know about A.G. Russell is that they tend to use materials, steels, etc., that are just not super impressive. They're all imported, um, or at least the bulk of them seem to be. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, I'm not super uh, jazzed about imported brands using low-end steels. But the thing is, you know, I, I try my best to be fair on the channel, right? Uh, you know, let quality rather than geography or, uh, uh, you know, price point dictate who shows up. And this year at the Blade Show, I actually got my way over to A.G. Russell. Sorry, wind is picking up a little bit. Wind through your those Venetian blinds. I don't know, I've never been to Venice. Anyways, um, uh, there I got over there, and it was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, sure. Materials aren't amazing, but let's, let's give it a shot, right? Because I'm always self-conscious about the fact that I don't do as many budget knife videos on my channel. Um, even though the budget audience, there we freaking go. Even though the budget audience is just as big as my uh, non-budget audience, so to speak. Okay, so this is the um, pocket clip. And by the way, note that the pocket clip is reversible. You can go to either direction, making this a fully ambidextrous knife, which is a beautiful thing. So now uh, we have this guy taken apart and, oh boy, it's a little grody in here. Let's go ahead and get cleaning. One thing to note is that this is a weird backlock, and we'll see just how weird it is once I take that screw out, but um, I'll go ahead and start wiping here just to get rid of whatever's in there. I'm hoping we're going to be able to do this knife some favors once we've disassembled it, because that is very often the case with um, inexpensively manufactured Chinese knives, is that a little bit of love uh, can do... Well, love can work wonders. Okay, so that little guy needs to go right there. Now what I'll do is pop this out, and then at this point, I hope, using my little spudger, and if you have a curious about any of the tools I'm using, for my disassemblies, go to nextrabaz.com slash tools, and I have a whole video talking about that. But very often it is the case that for relatively inexpensive imported knives, a little bit of uh, reassembly can actually do a lot of good using better lubricant, using, just frankly, a little bit more care. And that's not, an, that's not to impugn the original, you know, makers. It's just that they're trying to do this probably assembly line style, and they're being paid for knocking out 800 of these an hour or whatever it happens to be. That may be a little high. And, uh, you know, so they're not going to really put in the effort that you might with a knife that you own and love. I'm just slowly... Uh, the name of the game here is... Uh, trying to lift this off without, you know, over-torquing or anything like that. So I, I know I'm very slowly lifting this, so I'm just going to jiggle, 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 and we will slowly get ourselves there. Oh, yeah, we're almost there, folks. There we go. Beautiful. Ah, Teflon washes. All right. This little stop pin goes right in there. And now we see kind of the weirdness of it. Check this out. It's a backlock knife. So fundamentally, no different than most others, except instead of using a leaf spring in here, it's using a torsion spring in the back here. 
So this is how it's creating the tension that pushes the backlog up. Good, great, bad, or ugly idea? I'm not 100% sure, but we'll find out here today, at least with regards to disassembly. Uh, what I'll go ahead and do is pull this spring. I'd rather pull the spring on my own terms rather than have it come loose flying at my face at another one. I'm wearing, of course, a protective Batman mask, but that is never going to be exactly what you need. All right, I'll go ahead and clean up inside here. Seeing Teflon washes here, I can't say I'm surprised, but I am maybe a little disappointed. The reason I say that, not that it's, you know, crucial here, because it's a backlog, the action's never going to be amazing, but this is a knife that is otherwise reasonably well built. And, you know, I'd like my knives to get smoother over time rather than just either being the same or getting worse as the washes shred. I, I just never like seeing Teflon. And this is not quite cheap enough that I find Teflon to be okay. Again, here it's probably more justifiable than others, but given the relatively low price point in the action of a backlog, but eh, can we skip that, please? All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean out in here. Just kind of getting at all these various areas and regions. This liner is clean, beautiful. Is this welded on or something? I don't know, but I'm not going to fight it. Generally speaking, if a piece doesn't want to come loose... Oh, it it's held on by this screw here, no? You know, I'm, I'm still... I, I, I continue that I'm not going to fight it. Um, if there is a piece that, that really doesn't want to come loose, and you don't need to make it loose, generally speaking, I advocate that you don't loosen it. Um, some would argue that none of the stuff that I'm doing in most of my disassemblies is truly necessary, but this is the, you know, compressed air, you know, just, you damn millennials don't have to take apart your knives, just blow it out with a can of compressed air, and et cetera, and, you know, that's fine, you're welcome to have that approach. Um, generally, I appreciate the performance increase done there. I don't know why I went for the damn millennials aspect there, but there tends to be some overlap. Old time as it grew up on a buck one ten, you can't take apart. I can see how this could be a scary world. I'm not saying that, of course, all old timers are like that. I know many very forward thinking old timers, but still, nevertheless. Forward thinking old timer. That might be a contradiction in terms. I don't know. That's not my job to decide. All right, uh, let's go ahead and clean off these Teflon washes real quick here. Doing my best not to injure them in any way, shape, or form. All righty. And, of course, come on, you little bugger. There we go. Again, doing my best not to cut or injure them, because that's how these guys die. A little cut, and then they start shredding out. Okay, why not just use metal? What's wrong with metal? Damn kids today. Teflon washers. Millennials. All righty, back at the ranch. Gonna go ahead and pop the pivot back into position here. <clears throat> we are actually... Oh, no, didn't clean the back spring. Well, not back spring. The back lock bar. Lock bar. I don't have to say back, I guess. But it's a good idea to clean it off nevertheless. Interesting design here, I gotta say. Clean this off in this little groove there. Beautiful. Okay. It's reassembly time. The next question here is just... What now? Uh, thinking about it, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use some... Yeah, I'll use some 20 weight, or uh, 85 weight, that is, uh, nano oil here. Reason I'm doing that is because it tends to stay localized well, and this is never going to be an action showpiece. So let's go ahead and just use something that'll stay in position pretty well. There we go. And then let me rotate the Teflon a little bit here. Just to evenly distribute the oil. There we go. Beautiful. Now I will... Actually, use some of that and apply it to the inside of the blade. Pivot. Come here. Beautiful. All right, there's that. 
Uh, one thing to note is that we do have a D-shaped pivot, and then that D-shaped pivot wants to face forward. That's useful information for us to keep in mind as we progress in our uh, disassembly. The next thing, I'm going to try, this may actually be premature, but I'm going to try and drop this pit into position. More than anything such that I do not forget to do so later on. Okay, now comes, actually, let's go ahead and put in the pivot here. Or the, the washer here, just in case. Come on. Lift up, cheapy bastard. There we go. Uh, my bias against Teflon is real. I'll give you that. But I just don't feel the need. I'm going ahead and I'm applying a little bit of lubrication to the inside of this hole because this actually does rotate along that hole, around that hole. So there's that. Okay, now here comes what could be the fun part. I need to get this spring back into this hole. I don't know how much this is going to suck. It might suck substantially. It might not really suck at all. It's tough to know these things. I'm going to use this tool here to help me compress things. Oh, well, we might almost be there. Hey, that was actually easy. Okay, great. No problems. Nice. Okay, so uh, that spring is back installed. We now have a functioning backlock knife. That's beautiful. Now let's go ahead and reinstall this. Uh, this pin is in place now. Those pins are good to go. Next step is going to be to put that little screw back into position. This little tiny guy right here. Um, I'm going to use some Loctite on that guy. Um, just generally speaking. Let's go ahead and grab my T6 driver. There is just not a whole lot of screw to this, but it is definitely there. And I'll go ahead and put this into here. Come on. Why are you not going in? Are we out of alignment here? Maybe. Yeah, I think we are slightly out of alignment. And so as a result, he's just not wanting to go into his hole. There we go. Now we're good to go. All right, so there's that. At this point, we are uh, all set. And we can put on the pocket clip. Now the pocket clip, which by the way is also removable, will want to go on this side. Uh, so... Why do we not have a screw? Did we not have a screw on this side originally? Maybe we did not. I don't know. You know, I'm not going to bother. Um, let me put these other screws in place first. Then I'll insert the pocket clip afterwards, because you can do that here. So I know I need to put this guy in. So let's go ahead and start off by doing that. That will actually pull the, this screw head the rest of the way down, I believe. Unless I am so far out of the whack. Now you can see here it's, it's pulling that guy in. Okay. Good. So there's that. Next, I will go ahead. And again, I want this hanging in this direction because I am a righty. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I do like the full ambidextrousness. I know I have a mixed record on uh, sinister issues, so to speak, in that I don't always prefer lefty-friendly choices when it comes at the cost of my own. That's maybe cruel of me, but I should show more empathy for the left-handed. But at the same time, it's always nice when it's easy to see something that works well for both sides. I suppose another way to put that is I am not particularly sensitive to a tyranny of the 10% in cases where there were conflicts. Alrighty. I wonder who came up with the term Southpaw. 
and the left-handed people really very more often stand such that they are facing west? I don't know. These are important questions for our times. All right, um, and then finally, let's go ahead and drop in the pivot here. We are coming in with a T8. Let's go ahead and... Well, actually, come to think of it, if a right-handed person faces east, they are a southpaw as well. So I'm thinking maybe this just doesn't make any sense. All right, so at the moment, we are reasonably smooth. But I'm going to loosen that up a little bit. There is... Is that play? No. Just a little waggle, I suppose. No play. Pocket clip is in the right position. We ascended. Everything seems to be good to go. Okay, one last step here is just to apply a little bit of lubrication along the back there, because that will allow everything to go a little bit more smoothly as I do that. All right, we are good to go. We are put back together here. We have put back together this nameless, it has a name, I just don't know it, um, A.G. Russell lockback here, and uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Keep an eye out for the review coming up here shortly, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, no matter which hand is the win for you. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.